Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to this exhibition match stream. This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you the stream in question. First game is going to be between Cybernetic Pony and Catalyte on Felsic Inferno. So let's get this started in a couple seconds. So, Felsic Inferno, we have, I don't think, seen super recently, but it should be fairly familiar for anyone who's watched this at any length of time. I believe it was in the tournament. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony is, sorry, Catalyst starting in the southeast corner of the map. Cybernetic Pony is starting out in the southwest, going for CISO. Well, Catalyte has not chosen this species yet. Probably Fekir, no, going for CISO. Okay, CISO Mirror. That will be, well, that'll be what it is. CISO Mirror. Actually, CISO Mirrors are pretty interesting. Those, they tend to have I mean, there's all different tech paths CISO can go for, and just, well, mostly I mean, infantry versus vehicles. That's the big question, though. I think Cybernetic Pony, knowing what he's done before, last time he I saw him play, or one of the last times I saw him play recently, he went for a bunch of infantry in tanks. Stuffed them into tanks, teleported, or chronoported them in, teleported them in, and the tanks popped out and kicked a bunch of butt. But that was versus Grekum on Desecrated Temple, as I recall, so on Felsic Inferno, given the size of the map, or rather how small it is, I don't imagine that's likely to happen. What's more likely to happen is, we we'll see the scouting now, probably going to go into, on some point of getting an early armory, probably going to get early torn, relatively early Tornods, a lot of ATHCs, fighting back and forth with that into Tornods, and ultimately, in, that's where the game will probably end. But we'll see. Catalyte, on the other hand, he is expanding very quickly, apparently. No, never mind. He's checking to make sure that the Northeast hasn't been taken. Not sure why he's going for his own Northeast. Not that it matters. The Special Ops was destroyed by Cybernetic Pony Scouts, which I apologize are actually kind of hard to see in the dark. They're not in Fog of War. Kind of hard to see. I apologize. But with... Yeah, I'm not sure why he was scouting out the Northeast side. The Northwest side would make more sense, since that's most likely where Cybernetic Pony is going to be expanding himself if he was going to go for a fast expansion. But neither player is. Both players are focused very much on their own bases, setting themselves up. Cybernetic Pony has, like I said, gotten rid of Catalyte's special ops, so Catalyte's going to have a bit of a harder time getting forward, getting scouting information, dealing any harassment damage. Not that that's likely to be a big deal, although Catalyte is actually taking some damage here at home. It's... From his point of view, he's actually got nothing to deal with this. He has his one Marine, and there's the one damage special op. That, that's it. That really isn't going to do much good, in all honesty. As you can see, Catalyte needs to be jumping back a bit further to actually deal with this. He will be able to scout out Cybernetic Pony. Seeing what he's up to is actually more important right now. He has time. He sees there's a factory. That's the important thing. He needs to know there's a factory. He needs to know there are ATHCs. That is the big thing. He knows Cybernetic Pony is going for a large number of ATHCs. He also knows that tech is forthcoming due to the presence of the armory. What he doesn't know is that Cybernetic Pony is, in fact, expanding to the northwest side of the map. Which is really important. But yeah, that's that's something he doesn't know. He should eventually realize that, but for the moment... A little out of luck. However, Catalyte has jumped back to the 128 mark. Keeping his imagery all at home. A bit surprised he hasn't built any armories, though. No, he don't... Is he going... He's... A, that can't be right. He looks like he's abandoning his main base, but he's not. Okay, that makes more sense. However, why he isn't... Oh, right, because the Special Ops was going... No, no, that doesn't make any sense. I don't think that if you send an order and then create a hierarchy that the leader... Actually, actually, they would follow the order. So yeah, that was just the old Special Ops order being propagated down. But yeah, now with all the units at home, this works the loss of a Special Ops. That's rather unfortunate, really. But hey, other than the Special Ops, that actually worked out okay. Though Catalyte can remicro this slightly if he wants to keep that special up alive, that's possible. We'll see if he goes for that. It's probably going to be on the last battle of doing this, and it looks like, yes, he is actually going to try to get around this and loses an importer in the process. That is not good. He can get rid of the special ops and without losing it either. So he avoids losing any of his inventory, but he loses the importer. That is huge. Or soon will be anyway. So Catalyte unfortunately loses the importer, and that gives Cybernetic Pony a lot of leeway. Granted, Cybernetic Pony is already well ahead, 
Two importers, armory, factory, and ATHCs on the way, continuously. While Cadillac, on the other hand, two minutes down from there, rebuilding importers. Three importers from the looks of it. Setting the... Nope. Okay, that Marine's getting confused with his orders. Cadillac, you need to undo your orders. That was clearly not an undone order. As you saw with the Special Ops earlier going to the northeast side of the map, that was also not an undone order. Very important thing, that... Yeah, Cadillac can build the AT sorry, can build the importers, but the ATHCs will be coming in. Cybernetic Pony getting a mech as well, so Macrofab will be coming up shortly, and then I guess Martanks. So that's what Cybernetic Pony is going for. Heavy ground army. ATHC Martank. Very typical. But Cadillac isn't doing much. Like I said, he's getting the importers. He's not getting any armories or factories, which is very surprising. Now, in case you're wondering, Cadillac does play this game. He's not Someone who doesn't know how the game works. He knows how the game works. He knows what he can do. He just hasn't opted to build anything other than basically economy. Which, on this map, is really not worth it. This map is not big enough to support that. The start locations are too close. There aren't really any choke points to have any defensiveness. So you can't, you can't delay your opponent in any meaningful way. All you can really do is build up quickly and basically deflect their aggression directly. You can't just wall it off. You have to actually have stuff in base. You have to have production structures. I don't know what cat Okay, now he's going to try to build an armory, and now a factory, never mind. So Cadillac at the 322 mark has finally started to build production structures when Cybernetic Pony gets an ATHC. First ATHC, that's a 334 mark. Now, two minutes up from there, Cybernetic Pony does have three ATHCs. He does have a defense turret just in case he gets attacked by air, which might happen, I suppose, but... I don't know. Where Cadillac is, or when Cadillac is, that's, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen sooner than that turret is up. He'd be throwing out a couple Lancers, and that would be right now. Which isn't happening. Uh, Cadillac, you do something. However, the first ATHC has arrived, and Lancers would be a bad idea here. Outbuilding ATHC is about the only option, and... There we go. Getting it in both factories. Bearing in mind, you can actually select both factories at the same time to build the ATHC, so... Just for anyone who's watching, that's a thing you can do. Although, those who are watching probably are already aware of that, but in case you weren't aware of that, you can select multiple buildings in Acron. That's it's a stock standard thing in RTS games. It can be done. And Cadillac, unfortunately, not paying attention to the ATHCs. Well, actually, walling off an ATHC accidentally. Not actually telling it to get out of there. So, unfortunately, one of the ATHCs... It's not stuck. It could get out. It just isn't. But one of them did die due to its comrade just getting lazy. Just kind of neglecting its duties. And a Tornado, there we go. So yes, we do have machinery has been built. We do have Tornados coming in for Separate Pony. He's He is going towards the northeast side of the map just to make sure that the Catalyte hasn't expanded. Very prudent move. In this case, totally worthless. But you know what? Not totally worthless. What am I saying? In this case, it doesn't actually do anything because that wasn't an expansion that Catalyte took. But a good move nonetheless. I really shouldn't be downplaying it like that. But yeah, there we go. So Cybernetic Pony, thankfully for Cadillac, did break out... Did break that wall of importers, so the ATC could get out to defend. Nice job fixing it, Cybernetic Pony. Although Cadillac went and broke it again. Admittedly, he probably wants the wall just to have the safety, but at the same time... His units aren't... They're gonna be able to get out, but in a roundabout way. It just makes it harder. And a mech up for Cadillac, Cybernetic Pony, however... He is two minutes up from here, has not actually built a macrofab. He is going heavily torn on, so I was exactly wrong. He is not going for a heavy ground strategy, he's going for heavy air strategy. Now, ATHCs do counter air pretty well. They're good generalists for the cost. They are awesome against air. They don't last especially long compared to, say, tanks, but still, very useful. And we have Lancers as well, but at this point, Cybernetic Pony does have a turret up. This is the point in time where this turret exists, so the Lancer won't be able to do too much. And it does find the special up over here as well, which kind of nullifies... Well, it doesn't nullify anything. It does nullify the effect of the Lancer, I should say. Cybernetic Pony fully aware there's a Lancer up. He knows to prepare for it, and really, he already has. There's the Macrofab! Alright, so Cybernetic Pony has his Macrofab up at the... Looks like the 8 minute mark. While Cadillac has no Macrofab up at the moment. He has a mech. Has a bunch of resources. Probably getting Coronaporting, actually. Okay, there we go, there's a Macrofab. I was about to say, he looked like he was getting Coronaporting for the resources he had. But he could very well be doing so, actually. That's conceivable. 
If he does get Chrono Porting in that... Okay, he's not going to be able to do it quite yet. He is building more units. Pu pushing out a lot of mechs. Also good anti-air. And... Yeah, this Tornado is not going to have much of a chance. However, the ATCs coming in from Cybernetic Pony are still a concern. And Cybernetic Pony getting his Macrofab up, he will get Martanks fairly soon. Most likely. And then from there, it's not going to be a tri it's going to be a trivial matter to get rid of the mechs. It's not going to be hard to just get rid of everything that exists so far. Cadillac does not have any machinery units. He has machinery tech and ground units tech as well. So the mechs are definitely quite powerful. But he's not fighting against that many air units. And the Macrofab has not built anything yet. He can get Twin Mars. Cadillac can get Twin Mars, by the way. Cybernetic Pony cannot. And Cadillac actually has the money to start affording that. I'm a little surprised he isn't... Oh, yeah, there we go. There's gate tech. Now I'm not surprised. That makes sense. And Cybernetic Pony, by the way, has expanded to the Northwest. He expanded to the Northwest a little while ago, from the looks of it. Oh, no, not too long ago. Expanded to, at the 8-minute mark. So he's just now expanded there. Cybernetic Pony will be able to match Cadillac's economy. And Cadillac has... Actually, not that many RPs, come to think of it. So, Cadillac, I'd say, is... He's playing very defensive, as we can see. Pretty clear there. But I think he's probably going to try to go for a quick uppercut and win that way. Maybe get Twin Mars and uppercut with those. Hoping to send those back and then, I guess, well, tear apart everything in the past. I don't think that's going to work out too well. Cybernetic Pony is well prepared, especially with the Tornods. If he sends the mechs as well, it could work. But, yeah, I think Cybernetic Pony is just well prepared enough that it's not going to be a problem. And from there, it'll just be Catalyte pushing in with a bunch of units that will deal some damage, but probably won't win the game. We'll see, however. Comes down to how I mean, the mechs... Well... I don't know. Mechs aren't that expensive to Chrono Port, but at the same time, that's still Chrono Energy. And for an uppercut, Chrono Energy is the biggest cost. And there's Gate Tech at the 927 mark, apparently having to be re-researched. Catalyte running out of money beforehand. And... Or if not, then still further back in the timeline. Closer to the Unplayable Pass being researched. It will be completed pretty soon. And MFB is coming up. Okay, that's not something you see a whole lot of. Occasionally, but not very often. Cybernetic Pony, should point out, has got a really nice setup. He has units everywhere, just to scout out, just to know what's going on. He has Tornado over in the center. He has a Special Op over in the center. He has... Well, had... I thought... Okay, Minimap is misleading me. He doesn't have anything in the Northeast. So Cadillac could expand there with impunity, but Cadillac's not going to do that. He probably should, actually. He's, he is falling behind economically. He had a lot of RPs to start with, but at this point, Cybernetic Pony is well ahead there. Well ahead militarily. The Chronoport's the only thing that Cadillac has possibly going in his favor. It is up! The Chronoporter's done, the Teleporter's also done, but the Teleporter is not done three minutes prior to now, so that's... Unfortunately, not going to be the most useful. He is going to have to walk his units in unless he waits until when the Teleporter was built. And it looks like Cybernetic Pony actually is attacking. Going for an... Well, not quite an edge attack, but he is going for an attack. These units are not going to last long. Cadillac does see the attack. He does see that he actually does a very good job dealing with the attack. No problems whatsoever. The entire attack has been foiled. With no losses and only a bit of damage. Cybernetic Pony doesn't appear to be... He's not relenting, that's for sure. He's attacking fully. That was just a scout move. This is a big attack, and this is going to be... Oh. It's going to be jumped away from. Cybernetic Pony wants to re-micro it, so he doesn't seem to care about using these Tornados too much. Oh, there we go. Where is it? Well, yeah, that's... This is going to be painful. Mechs are doing what they can, but unfortunately the ATCs are taking them out, and that... These ATCs taking them out. Tornados are finishing everything else off. Chronoporter just being done, but unfortunately MFB... Okay, Frigate's being put under construction instead of MFBs. That'll help slightly, but even then, it's not gonna work. I don't think it's gonna work. Catalyte really isn't that much to go for here. And he's not even paying attention. He doesn't even know this is happening, or at least he's not paying close attention. He looks like he's trying to make the Chronoporter work in his favor. Basically, Chronoporter these guys back and hope for the best. Or possibly uppercut even sooner. He can do that, but he's not... I mean, it's a paradox waiting to happen if he does, but it's all he's got. Really, that's all he can do is try to save this with units, well, soon to be paradoxed out. And that's exactly what he's going to do, sending back a bunch of mechs, and they do not last at all. That is unfortunate. None of those mechs make it. None of those mechs deal any damage. The ATHCs would have been a better option, and probably more Twin Mars as well. Getting a bunch of Twin Mars would have been really nice to have. Sending the mechs back again, apparently, but... 
no, can't really control them, unfortunately. And the ATC is just too powerful. So, not much that can be done there. He does have, I think, the money to send back more, though. Max cost 31 coin, yeah, he's got a ton of cash. He has more than enough to deal with this. Sending back yet another mech, that's not going to work. Actually, with the red time wave coming over, Cadlight's not got much. He's trying to send back something to rebuild, trying to send back one mech to rebuild everything. And that's not going to work. This is game. Cybernetic Pony has taken it. And back at the 12 minute mark when Cybernetic Pony was, we see everything just finishing everything off. This Tornod finishing all the stuff off. But other than that, there's not much to be said. That That's game. That is entirely it. So, Cadillac probably going to throw in the towel pretty soon. Jumping back to the 1223 mark. Going to the 13 minute mark. Sees that he really doesn't have much. He does have this frigate, actually. He could actually, he could use that. He's not totally dead yet. There is a small chance. Getting a special up, that's not going to do too much good. But he does have the macro. He could get a Martank. I'm surprised he's not getting a Martank. Martanks would be perfect in this situation. Or at least... Martanks would be a useful tool in this situation. Or regular tanks, actually. Oh, no, he's in a factory. Okay, never mind. Martanks and arm... Okay, the armory's almost down. Sorry. Magrab's almost down. The armory is still fine, but not much can be done for that. Cybernetic Pony is, at the same time, getting Corona Porter just in case. Just in case there's some shenanigans that are going to go on. Cybernetic Pony has a Corona Porter in his main base. He has a secondary base just in case. And no Corona Porter there, though. Surprisingly for him, he likes to build more than one Corona Porter, but... Nothing yet at his northwest base. I guess, given that he's about to win, it's probably not the biggest concern. And Cadillac mulling over his loss, I think that's about it. Yeah, that... just... done. Why is Cadillac not saying GG and surrendering? I don't understand this. Okay, well, whatever. We, we know that Cadillac lost, so I'll just end it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, and I will be back with another game shortly. And Cadillac, remember to surrender when you lose, because it's really annoying having to wait for it to go off the timeline. It's not like any other RTS game where you can just... All your units die and it's done. Just, it takes... It... It takes a while. It has to fall off the timeline. It takes too long. Don't do it. Anyway, we'll be on to the next game, so stay tuned. And that game will be between... I think... Monkuki and probably Cybernetic Pony. So stay tuned for that. I'll be back with that in just a moment.